People are claiming to have recently found ancient Egyptian pyramids in Australia hidden in plain sight. I'm Sam and welcome to Conspiracy Central. Apparently there's been speculation over the years that Australia is home to some ancient Egyptian pyramids. The idea and the practicality of pyramids existing in Australia is not exactly new. For example, the Ballandine Pyramid in Australia is a man-made pyramid serving as a tourist attraction that was built by Ken Stubberfield in 2006. It is 50 feet tall and it was built from blocks of local granite. The pyramid also sits on private property belonging to a local vineyard. Though they may look a lot different than how they look in actual Egypt, the idea behind them is the same. A group of amateur archaeologists from Australia believed that 5,000 years ago, before the Ballandine and before the Europeans came to visit Australia, ancient Egyptians got there first and left evidence of their presence through the building of their pyramids. There have been talks of a pyramid built under a mountain in North Queensland being discovered, which is what gave validity to these outrageous claims. This group of amateur archaeologists are claiming that this pyramid, now known as Walsh's Pyramid, stands 3,000 feet tall and was allegedly hidden in plain sight beneath thick layers of vegetation and soil. The pyramid is said to be the final resting place of the Egyptian royal lord Nefertiru, who was a former member of the ancient Egyptian royal family. Evidence of their claims is supported by the discovery of the Gosford Glyphs, which are located in the nearby community of Gosford. The Gosford glyphs are a set of strange carvings that according to several different researchers are Egyptian in nature. However, the carvings at Gosford have long been dismissed as fakes by different scholars literally from the moment that they were discovered in the 70s. Professor Boyo Okinga from Macquarie University's Ancient History Department in Sydney told ABC, I'd be the first person who'd welcome some sort of link because it would make my subject relevant to Australian history. It'd be wonderful, but I'm afraid it's just not possible. He says the carvings are randomly placed, which is not at all structured in the same way that ancient Egyptian rock inscriptions are produced. The carvings are also a mashup of symbols from Egyptian eras thousands of years apart. He went on to say that there's no way people would have been inscribing text from the time of Cheops with the signs that weren't even invented until 2,500 years later. Professor Okinga says it's likely that the carvings were done in the 1920s during the worldwide Egyptology craze sparked by the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. But amateur archaeologist Ray Johnson supposedly translated these alleged glyphs for the Museum of Antiquities in Cairo and was supposedly successful in documenting and translating the two facing walls of Egyptian characters. The translation of the Gosford glyphs supposedly records the story of a tragic saga of ancient Egyptian explorers that shipwrecked in a strange and hostile land which is now known as Australia. Ray Johnson is convinced that the hieroglyphs at Gosford, without a shadow of a doubt, just point to how Lord Nefertiro is buried at the site. Egyptologist Mohammed Ibrahim and Kemet School co-director Yusuf Abdel Hakim Ayan, who studied ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs his entire life, also believes these glyphs to be authentic. Mohammed Ibrahim and Yusuf Abdel Hakim Ayan note how the scribes who created the ancient symbols in Australia accurately use several ancient hieroglyphs and grammatical variations. Another pyramid that has been getting a lot of buzz in Australia is the Gimpy Pyramid, also known as Rocky Ridge or Jockey Kundu. These pyramids are located in the outer area of Gimpy in Queensland, Australia. Some claim it was built by ancient Egyptians and others say it was built by just an Italian vineyard owner in the 1950s. We don't know this vineyard person's name though, so let's just called the Martha. That's the most famous vineyard owner I know. Anyway, it stands about 100 feet tall and has six stone terraces varying from 10 meters wide at the bottom to two meters wide towards the top, and it incorporates some natural rock features. A small idol was allegedly dug up around the same area that some believe is a representation of the Egyptian god Thoth, an ape form clutching the Tau, or the Cross of Life. Thoth was the god of writing and wisdom, depicted as an ape by the Egyptians until about 1000 BC when he became an ibis-headed human-bodied deity who recorded the judgment of the souls of Amenti, the afterworld. This statue is now on display at the Gimpy Museum. 
According to Rex Gilroy, the man who discovered the pyramid in 1975 and who runs the museum, it was created by Egyptians who had mining operations in Australia centuries ago with bases of operation that reached as far as the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. Other objects have reportedly been found in the area, including scarabs, coins, and even an Easter Island type head. The town of Gympie at Tin Can Bay, north of Brisbane, Queensland, is the site of a pyramid complex. The first Europeans to come into the area in the 1830s learned of them from the now extinct Kabi-speaking people of Gympie, known then as the Demuri. It has been told that they believe that brown-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde-haired beings wearing dolphin pendants came from Orion long ago and built pyramids and temple sites, but water covered them all. The ruins were taboo to them. Settlers took the stones of the pyramids and other buildings and used them as foundation stones for the main street of Gympie and the construction of buildings, including the local church that still stands. There were stone statues like the Easter Island statues and also animal statues. These have since been destroyed or they're hidden, but photos and sketches of them remain from the first European man to come into the area. The tunnels under Gympie were demolished with dynamite. All but one of the pyramids were bulldozed into the ocean by the army in the 1950s, and the lone survivor remains on private land with a strict no trespassing policy. The pyramid is 100 feet high and designed with a series of terraces up to four feet tall and eight feet wide. The army sealed the entrance in the 1930s after investigating reports of cattle wandering into the pyramid when an opening was still accessible and never coming out. No reports or findings are available. In recent years, according to locals, the owner has attempted to destroy the pyramid in hopes of discouraging visitors to the site. Now it's just literally a big pile of stones. Artifacts have survived, including the statue resembling Ganesha from Indian mythology. I want to remind you that all of this is merely speculation and there have been many, many professionals that have discounted these alleged findings as false. Modern scholars have debunked a variety of alternative theories that claim that the site was constructed by extraterrestrials, ancient Egyptians, Phoenicians, the Mayans, or that even the Chinese built a pyramid on the site. Though these claims over the years are pretty crazy, it's interesting to think about the what ifs. What if ancient Egyptians actually traveled to Australia and fought off kangaroos while building pyramids, using the future knowledge of the language that was to come and then immediately left after? Or were they time travelers? Is that how they knew to write using words not yet discovered? I don't know, man, who knows? Do y'all think that ancient Egyptians set foot in Australia? We would love to know. Please tell us your theories in the comments. This is Sam, and you're watching Conspiracy Central.